Hello, today I have another Ugreen adapter. I made the last Ugreen video and this was a highly requested item, so I decided to move it up the list and get it out sooner rather than later. I know there are others in the series, but today only this 160 watt Nexode Pro will be put through the paces. Is this going to be an overheating mess or is it really going to meet the claims on the box like less heat and higher efficiency and GAN infinity? I think Bassius has some work to do to catch up to infinity, infinite marketing at least. As usual, this power adapter will be put through its paces, tested for the basic specifications like voltages and efficiency, as well as checked for things like overload and thermal performance. When something bears the pro name, I expect it to really be a step above the non-pro version. So what do you think? Is this pro going to be the real deal, or is it going to be infinitely the same? To infinity and beyond, ugh. So, infinity squared next year? Where can I pick up my bonus check for that genius move? Okay, enough of that. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos are detailed, so ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared. If you want more information, see the links on the channel page. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. Today's only up is this Ugreen 160 watt Nexode Pro 4 port fast charger with model X753. This is a newer power adapter line on the market from Eurogreen, and it actually consists of a few different models, but I am only looking at this flagship model today. This represents a step forward in a few areas for Eugreen. First of all, the packaging is almost plastic free. The adapter has one plastic bag wrapping around it and the rest is cardboard, and the packaging is much easier to open and much smaller than previous devices. So this does give a professional feel to the product on first impression. Within the box, only the basics, no cables or extras, adapter, user manual, and that's it. For a premium priced adapter in this professional arena, I wouldn't mind getting a cable with it. In looking at the adapter, they did spend some time on the fit and finish. It does look good. It has a nice finish and overall has a heavy feel, the feel of quality. More on the weights a bit later on. The adapter has flip out plugs, but the way the corners are made, this isn't going to be able to support any of the kind of clip on plugs. So it will have to hang off of an adapter for international use. Again, from that professional perspective, I am expecting more and getting less. The user manual for this charger is okay. It does lack some critical information. Actually, with the information in the user manual, I am surprised they were able to sell this as it lacks typically required information like operating temperature range or air conditions. Again, professional product. I want to know if this is going to work in tougher environments. Another thing I'll be talking about later on. What I really like in the user manual are the infographics that simply tell you what it can do on each port with different USB devices plugged in. Some people were looking for even power sharing. Move along. It doesn't do that. It gives the usual modes of operations and some basic specifications about the performance of the product. I summarized the modes of operations here in this table to make it a bit easier to digest. Note, the PPS mode is short of 5 amps, so this could spell trouble for some devices. I used to find that the PPS would easily hit 5 amps on most devices, but lately I'm finding the opposite. They fall short on that mode. A professional product, I'd expect it to be able to go a bit beyond the claims. So this charger will probably struggle to do dual 45 watt Samsung super fast charging. 25 watt would be easy, but also a waste. With the higher wattage, this charger should be able to handle a lot of laptops, tablets, and phones for charging, as well as handle some of the lower power devices like camera batteries, chargers, or watch chargers. It does still have a USB-A port, which is welcome for some non-PD capable devices. Plenty of those out there still. Around the back of the charger, I find that it has a few marks on it. The TUV mark is a safety listing. This means the device was tested to comply with a host of standards relating to the conductivity of the plastic, the thermal performance, although I have issues with this one you will see later on, and the breakdown of the components inside under dangerous conditions. The six in a circle indicates compliance with DOE six. I'm going to test that. The square in a square means double isolated. There are a few other logos on here, but I won't be going over them in this video. They relate to other compliance tests and are a bit beyond the scope of this short video. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is being drawn, like in a short circuit or a fault condition. In the case of this power adapter, it shut down at 155 watts on the high power USB port, operating as a 100 watt port with two devices plugged in that dropped to 103 watts, which is a safe limit. The device recovers after removal of the fault. Since this power adapter has multiple ports, I can check renegotiation of power delivery between the various ports. No surprises here that each plug and unplugs triggers a reset of the other ports. 
Like the newer Prime Anchor power adapters, this negotiation happens much faster and almost seamlessly. It will still require a negotiation, so there will still be a reset in charging state if a power delivery mode is in use, but at least it seems to recover very quickly. At 5 volts only, the power stayed on during plugs and unplugs of other ports. The USB-A port also triggers a reset of the USB-C ports. So this is a step in the right direction here, and this power adapter is a lot better than older chargers on the market. So the box should have had something like smart power distribution or something that it actually does. Okay, so not to go over too much here, the AC power supply supplies a controlled clean voltage for testing and comparing these power adapters. The power adapter, once plugged in, settles down to get an idle power usage. And here, for this wattage class, this adapter is excellent. Phew, some good news. The idle power usage is class leading for a 160 watt power charger. I wouldn't mind leaving this plugged in all the time. Once we put a load on the device, the data starts to shift in the other direction though. The power consumed starts to go up faster than I'd like to see, and this leads to falseness of the marketing claims that it is more efficient. Yes, it is still true they don't say more efficient than something else, but it is misleading because it isn't more efficient. Here's the overall data for this one. The voltages look good. The ripple looks very good. The efficiency is where it struggles, and the power quality score is actually excellent. So it is going to do an excellent job of consuming AC power, but in the process of converting that to DC at the output, it is losing too much heat. This means it is going to get hot. At full power, 19 watts have to be dissipated in the tiny adapter case, and that's a lot. The adapter meets the DOE6 requirements, but just barely. The idle power was good, but the efficiency literally is the absolute minimum. When switching over to the other voltage standard, 230 volts and 50 hertz, the efficiency does improve some. The idle power usage was also higher, but still very good. There were some interesting effects in this mode though. The adapter changes modes around 80 watts of DC output power when being powered by 230 volts, which hurts the quality. This means the true power will be a little higher. I used the 28 volt mode for one of these tests and there was an interesting effect where the ripple shoots up in both this mode and the PPS mode to about 180 millivolts. Still not bad, but suddenly much higher. This happened on the 60 hertz power as well. In all cases, the DC voltage was very close to the target though, so on this front, the adapter really is professional class. For the advanced users, here's a screen capture of the data with the adapter at full load. So I've picked and chosen pieces of this information for a presentation. There's a lot more to the testing than the data presented. This shows the AC or input side waveform capture. This power adapter is kind of heavy. For a power adapter in this class, it is pushing the upper end of the scale. But in this class of adapter, I think this is acceptable. Hopefully they spent the extra weight on heat sinks. The Satoshi, Anchor, and Rokerin all shown as comparisons here, and they show that this adapter is more in line with the Satoshi adapter itself, but if you add in the cable, that becomes the heavier option for only five extra watts. So for the power level and size, it's not terrible. When directly comparing the size of these adapters, the Ugreen 160 Watt Pro is cramming those extra watts into a case a bit smaller than the Satoshi while doing that at a lower efficiency, which means it has to get more heat out. Coming soon, thermals. Time to compare the data. I have several adapters in near power levels, but not exact. These are all pretty strong performers, but there are definitely some differences. When comparing the idle data across this lineup, the Ugreen 160 watt adapter does great at both 120 and 230 volts. This idle power usage is the power used doing nothing with no cables plugged in. Just plugging in certain cables raises this a lot. I am making the Satoshi look bad, and that is still my daily driver. On the idle graph, the Ugreen is the lowest power consumer in the class. That's excellent. There is a caveat here, which one is better with all the cables plugged in, since let's face it, you don't unplug all the wires from the charger when you aren't using it and still leave it plugged in the wall. More on that in a future video. I should start comparing 0.1 watt out power consumption really. The tables will turn on quite a few of these. When comparing the overall data from these adapters, they're similar, but I specifically picked a similar range of adapters. The outlier is the performance of the Ugreen on 230 volts. Not amazing here. They are all the same type of power supply, but if we dig into the watts, we will find some differences. On the average power consumption graph, this becomes more evident. The Satoshi 165 uses less power to supply five more watts than the Ugreen. This is five extra watts of heat in a box, and you know what that means. 
it isn't less heat like the packaging says, it's more heat in a smaller package. That only leads to one thing. And yes, a little longer of a wait to find out. Let's talk about value. The 160 watt doesn't represent excellent value, but it isn't extremely overpriced as we have seen from other Ugreen products. The pricing is more fair and in line with other products on the market. It is worse performance wise in some cases, yes, but for the cost, this time you are getting a safety listing and excellent DC voltage performance. In some cases that is critical, so here it really put that extra cost into a performance metric that matters. And yes, you can hit this with a full power, zero power, full power load on repeat and it just chugs along. This is something other power adapters can't do. They just didn't tell you about it. In terms of the claims on the box, well, it is time. Okay. Finally, the thermals on this power adapter. The adapter doesn't do great here. Under a low power load, the charger does okay. It doesn't get too hot, but it is also inefficient, so using a lower wattage charger is still better. As we discussed in the average power consumption part of the video, this uses a bunch of extra watts to do the same job. So the consequence of this extra work in the tiny box means the adapter gets hot, quite hot. Actually, in just 25 minutes, it overheated and shut down at full load. So this would struggle again to meet that marketing claim on the box of fully charging a heavy power consumer like a fully discharged MacBook Pro 16 inch because after 30 minutes at 140 watts or about 70 watt hours out, that's probably 60 watt hours into the laptop battery. So still full speed charging ahead, the adapter will struggle thermally. In this case, with others, sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Either way, not very professional at all. The thermal guard did seem to work though. It did shut down and recover after overheating. It's winter, so the test room is cool at 18 degrees C. The performance here is just not what I would expect and is really the biggest downfall of the adapter. So what does this all mean? This is a new charger. It has positives and it has negatives. I described and measured it in detail and after that you decide if this is for you. I genuinely was trying to give this every chance to be good. I don't want it to be bad, but this adapter did have some issues. Being called pro and having some questionable direct marketing claims on the box is not so great. The DC voltage was very stable though. The idle power was excellent. So if those claims were on the box, I'd be like, yes, it's amazing. But no, it was all about efficiency and temperature and it's not class leading at those things. It is tested and on the database. Now 21 total U green power adapters. I'll see you in the comments and I expect to have some good debate on this one. Remember, this is just one video, so we will have to see what others think as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.